Thank you very much. Good morning to all. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be with you today. Um, so I will just present you what's going on uh, at UNIL in Lausanne. And um, actually, uh, some quick facts. It's, uh, it's almost 500 old university. It's a, it's a state university, but it's not a federal university like ETH Zurich or EPFL. So it's a cantonal university with about 17,000 students and including 2,000 doctoral students. And uh, we have a full program of bachelor to the continuing education levels. And it's a specialist university. Uh, we have no more math, physics, and chemistry, sort of STEM, which have been transferred to the neighboring uh, EPFL um, to be more actually rational. And uh, so this university now, it consists of seven faculties uh, around three um, main poles, which are life sciences and medicine, which are together actually, environmental sciences and human social sciences. So we do not have exactly the same challenge as uh, in Luxembourg because we don't have any more STEM in a way. Uh, but you see that these poles enable quite, uh, quite a lot of uh, potential interdisciplinary research. And uh, of course, this university is traditionally, um, as I said, um, um, made of, uh, of faculties, of discipline-oriented faculties. You have the list of, of them here. And of course, everything is organized according to this disciplinary scheme, including the budget allocation, the education programs, and of course, research. As you know, uh, researchers are still um, evaluated for the uh, top-notch research, best publication, and uh, also the quality of grants they obtain from uh, funding agencies. And uh, this, even if he, at the local level at UNIL, we would consider, for example, interdisciplinary activities as part of the evaluation of the assessment. This is not always true at the international level, and we have to prepare our young researchers for the uh, international competition. So I would say that still now at UNIL, research is essentially focused on top-notch disciplinary research. So what, what can we do? What, what did we try to do? So for now more than 30 years, we, we launch on a regular basis some programs dealing with, with sometimes with specific topics uh, on interdisciplinary research, sometimes on broad topics, sometimes it was completely free. But what we notice is that it's, uh, it's always a, a short to midterm ac accomplishment, achievement. In fact, once the, the money is gone, uh, the momentum is not kept and people go back to their own uh, research most of the time. Um, so I will develop a little bit on that. Uh, I actually had prepared something on, on education, but this, was, this is not today's uh, uh, topic, so I will just jump on that, just to mention that we, we are trying to do some uh, interdisciplinary education, both at a, a master, the, the bachelor sorry, and the master level, and of course uh, some topics are more relevant, like uh, environmental studies right now, and um, we, organized, um, we organized some, um, some seminars open to all faculties, everybody actually, uh, including the public, which is very interesting because we have a strong interaction with the public and politics as well. And um, one more example here, at, still at the master level, we, where we uh, teach a course on environmental crisis and societal change together with a lecturer from Lancaster University. So it is an inter-university program, which is very successful, uh, but still at the education level. So about research, um, we tried something a little bit different from what has been uh, just uh, exposed before uh, at Luxembourg. We, we set up a number of uh, interdisciplinary research centers, which are, of course, interfaculty as well, uh, mostly dealing with uh, major orientation. The, the rectorate wants to give to the university. So we define on uh, five actually centers, one dealing with mountain research on sustainability, sports, ethics, and life courses and vulnerabilities. The idea is that these, um, 
this um, center of finance by the by um, by central money by the rectorate money over four year four year periods and uh, after every four year they will be evaluated and then the rectorate will decide if it's still a priority uh, topic or if they perform or not and this could stop or this could be uh, uh, done again for a new period of four years and so on and uh, basically the many uh, the, the all researchers affiliated to the research center are still affiliated uh, officially to their own faculty but this is a kind of a platform where you can have activities of uh, seminar activities also research activities and uh, there is money to pay for a coordination coordinator and also for course for uh, interdisciplinary research projects um, like, like here and usually we uh, recruit postdocs not PhD students because we do not have a uh, doctoral program which is very strong uh, and dealing with interdisciplinarity so we start with postdocs at different level of maturity I would say and uh, they are they have two uh, there are two co-PIs which are supervising what they their own job and of course there are regularly seminars to share what they uh, they actually did during their research and this is also a kind of uh, seed funding program and the idea is to get some uh, feedback from funding agencies knowing that for example the Swiss National Science Foundation has a whole division dedicated to interdisciplinarity so it's rather easy if I can say to set up a specific uh, research program for proposals to be submitted to the SNF or maybe to uh, the European Council as well so how does it work after two years um, there are still big challenges, as I must say. I will pick up some ideas from Luxembourg, I must say. <laughs> but right now, in fact, what we see is that uh, we are mostly dealing with senior researchers or, or lecturers or professors, those ones who are well settled, who have nothing you know, to, to compete for anymore, that to prove, I would say. And this starts in, in mid career um, uh, stage. and among those ones, we always have the same guys participating to seminars, activities, course, and this is merely two, three percent of the whole research community of University of Lausanne. Always the same people, very energetic, enthusiastic, dedicated, which are committed to several programs. These are really champions but in a limiting number, unfortunately. So this is one of the big challenges to get more researchers and maybe younger researchers involved. And the other challenge is, of course, money. Um, we would like a, a better um, return on the seed funding. It works well, it improves, but still uh, there is room for improvement. And also, but this is a more general topic we can talk about, uh, we would like that criteria for research assessment would include more interdisciplinarity criteria so that young researchers will be less afraid uh, to, uh, to get involved in such programs. Okay, I would stay here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor BC. We are right on track. Thank you to all of the speakers for very interesting topics that have actually shown that the issues that we all have are pretty much the same regardless of where we are and regardless of the size and scope of a university, the challenges of interdisciplinary are truly many. And uh, I would like to kick off uh, this question and answer session in, uh, in a few ways. Um, first, I actually have a, a question for all of the speakers regarding the fact that what, what Professor BC actually was mentioning at the end, and this is, um, are there ways, do you think that there are ways that we could perhaps lobby for national funding in the sphere of interdisciplinarity? Because many of our, let's say, uh, national funding institutions are also bogged down in uh, monodisciplinary forms of funding. So, do you think maybe this is a way that through our various uh, 
university networks or, or national rectors conferences, maybe we could move forward. What do you think? Professor BC, maybe? Maybe I can start actually. We, we are lucky in the way that this job has been done at the Swiss level as the SNF has, a, has four divisions. Uh, you know, the, the three uh, disciplinary divisions like social and human sciences and then uh, medicine and then uh, hard sciences, I would say, uh, natural sciences. And then they created, but I don't remember when exactly, uh, this fourth um, department dealing with interdisciplinarity specifically. And then you have a number of rules uh, that you have to prove that you are interdisciplinary, there are co-PIs and things like that. This also must involve uh, several universities, actually, uh, which could be local, I mean, Swiss or, or from abroad. And the interesting point is that it's about 9% of the budget of, the, uh, of this agency, which is not a lot, but this is already almost 10%, considering the, the billions of, of uh, francs they, they put every year, it's, it's not bad. It's, uh, but I think that could be a, a track to follow at, uh, at other national levels, it works. Thank you, it's definitely a stimulus at the national level. Professor Kreisel, what is the situation uh, in your country? Well, um, we, we have a slightly different uh, situation in the sense that we cannot bring universities together in the country because there is just one. Yeah. Um, um, but um, I, I think that um, there are different points I would like to make. I think Francois said something uh, also about how to attract people to interdisciplinarity, our people. Uh, a first thing I would like to say is it is certainly also by communicating about this, by choosing what we celebrate as, 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 a, as, a, as a university. I see that I, when we send out signals what the university celebrates, interdisciplinarity, European projects, etc., that this is also an, an, an enabler and, and, and a push for people to come. Now, for the question with, with the funding agencies, I think you're entirely right. I see two, uh, two ways here. The first one is also for us to show that it does work, right? Uh, because um, as a university, we can show the example. I can see, for instance, that uh, the kind of stuff we're doing is attracting uh, the look from our own funding agencies and other funding agencies abroad, seeing that it does work and that they could also push them a little bit further. And perhaps as a last remark, I think we are in a time now where possibly uh, interdisciplinarity will come a little bit more automatically because we are very much driven by, by, by large mega trends like health, sustainability, and let's say the digital transformation. And all these challenges, uh, by definition, request an interdisciplinary approach. And I, I liked what Francois was saying, which basically is we need also to prepare our community, especially the younger part of the community, to this international challenge and to remain uh, competitive. But I think that these um, overarching approaches also to climate, etc., will give us some more push so that also the funding agencies um, uh, introduces. In Europe, I think it's still rather, unfortunately, more seen as a sherry on the cake than a fundamental thing. I think that would be great to push this a bit more forward. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Kreisel. And of course, the situation is different in small countries and large countries because of the, the structuring of, of uh, funding. But uh, what are uh, the thoughts in Slovenia about uh, trying to lobby for funding for interdisciplinary research? Uh, Professor Stare or Professor Plemenitas or, or Professor Zweiner Gottwein, please, uh, I would be quite uh, eager to hear your thoughts. Well, maybe may uh, uh, as for uh, for Slovenia, I'm not uh, very well aware of how interdisciplinarity is actually pushing uh, and and uh, or its advantage in in um, financing. But I know that let's say for the last call, which was for the research in COVID situation, it was an advantage to uh, bring together different uh, groups. So uh, this is the way our agency, uh, national agency that uh, finance research uh, projects and programs, actually there are some, some um, signs that interdisciplinarity is actually an advantage. Maybe Professor Schgeiner, who is also involved in, in a 
uh, uh, under um, Reddit studies uh, will say a little bit more about this. Yes, um, thank you. I would agree with the previous speaker that there is a lot of push of interdisciplinarity also on funding because according to my opinion, different projects or programs are more and more interdisciplinary. They involve more and more partners and a lot. I think that this is a very good uh, pressure on the national agencies to re recognize the power of different disciplines together because as you mentioned, there is a lot of problems relating to the environment sustainability and all of these issues which are very up to date now. And also in the framework of University of Ljubljana, according to my opinion, a lot has been changed because when we have started or my, uh, the, the previous um, colleagues who started with these interdisciplinary programs, there were a lot of differences between different disciplines and different faculties, but now I think that we have found quite a lot common ways and we can re-establish quite a lot of cooperation and that means that we as University of Ljubljana are more powerful also when talking with other partners. Uh, thank so, you very much. Uh, I, I agree with you and I think uh, all of the, the points that have been made by the speakers are showing that uh, interdisciplinarity is actually upon us, even though maybe we don't have, a, we are fully comprehending it. And I think uh, with the emergence of generally environmental issues, this is when really a lot of uh, disciplines started working together to have a comprehensive response to various environmental issues. Uh, Professor BC, may I ask you a very specific question? Um, you mentioned these interdisciplinary research centers at your university. How did you select the topics? I, I, I like the, the topics. I, the question is how did you, what was the process? Was this a strategic decision by the governance or did you have a, an open discussion and some feedback from uh, the staff? How, how did you come upon these topics? Yeah, good question, in fact. Um, it's a mix, basically. There, there, are some, there were some existing interests, uh, for example, in sustainability for a long time in, in Lausanne. And also the campus is, uh, is kind of driven in a sustainable way. So it's been a long process. It was absolutely obvious to us that one of these centers should be dealing with uh, uh, sustainability, I would say. This is one example. For the mountain, it was... Uh, it was also coming from the faculty saying that uh, the, this, this kind of environment, very sensitive to climate change, by the way, but also for economics and uh, other uh, reasons, uh, hydrology, this was also a bottom-up approach. These people from this faculty of geosciences came to us and said, look, if, if we could do something uh, wider with your help, that would be great. And actually, this is probably one of the most efficient centers and it was a bottom-up, uh, you know, uh, option. Otherwise, um, the, the third one on life courses, for example, is, is even different, basically. Uh, it was successful in getting a huge grant from the SNF, which is called the NCCR, National Competence Center for Research. And just to tell you, it's 16 million francs for four years, renewable twice, but that's 48 millions given by the government, the central government, you know, the confederation uh, for, for this kind of project, but uh, there are strict rules. This must involve at least 10 to 15 different partners from different universities. And also they must be at the end of the process of the program after two years, they must be a, a permanent structure set up. So we decided to set up this kind of center following the end of the program of the National uh, uh, Swiss National Foundation. And uh, for ethics, it's also a, a long lasting platform, which we transform into a center anyway. But it, at the very end, the rectorate decides to give help or not, but it's, it's basically coming from, from the bottom, say, to be sure we, we are not, you know, missing uh, the targets, you know. Thank you. I think it's, uh, it's very important to hear experiences from other universities to see whether it's applicable to our own environments. 
Professor Kreisel, I have also a brief technical question. Uh, I, will, I very much liked your program, especially these audacious projects and the, 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 the names of the, the programs are also quite appealing and I think drive the imagination. I maybe missed it. What is the uh, length of a project that you have uh, awarded by one of these uh, four ways? Yeah, it's an excellent question. I haven't said it, in fact. So the, the audacious projects run from two to four years, um, which allows basically inside the projects to integrate a, a PhD or a, a postdoc. I think that's the main thing. This has, of course, um, consequences. The, the consequences that is that it asks for more money, right? But on the other hand, um, we have thought um, that as a university, we need to give some longer term stability. And we hope that by this, um, we create something more around. And it's not that after one year, there is no more money that it stops, which is a, a, in a I, I've heard from Francois that, uh, of course, we have the same problem. So we've decided. Um, to invest significant money. So basically, um, at the, the money we have at the central level, we uh, invested entirely into the IAS. And I can perhaps share that uh, we had a midterm review where we discussed also the funding from the government, that the government was so appealed by this that they gave extra money uh, to, this, uh, to, this, uh, to this institute. One of the critical parts really to onboard the entire community, I think, is to keep it uh, topic-free. That has been a large discussion inside the university and outside the university. Um, but I, I have very strongly insisted with my colleagues that it is a, uh, a priority-free zone because there are enough priority zones out there, policy driven. It is a priority-free uh, zone. So we use it as, an, an, as a strategic instrument for the university to enable interdisciplinarity, but we don't use it as a strategic instrument to foster one or the other topic. This we do in different ways. So, so um, I think that is possibly uh, important. And we give the signal that we also accompany this by longer projects. And by this, we engage more, uh, more people, we, uh, we believe. But it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a relatively significant investment. Huh? But because it's one of the main strategic directions of the university, so it's a real ambition and we want to give, make it concrete. Uh Thank you very much, Professor Kreisel. I think uh, this round of, of presentations and discussion has shown one other point and that not only is this a, a way of bringing disciplines together, but I think this is a way to strengthen uh, the identity of the academic and research staff at a university. Uh, this uh, belonging to a, 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 a common cause uh, and is, I think is very important and not only strengthening the university in terms of providing uh, new inputs, but providing this identity that is very important. And perhaps this is something that could be uh, uh, supplemented with uh, cooperation between universities, regardless of whether these are European university initiatives or, or other forms of uh, networking between universities. So, uh, I think now we are slowly coming to the end. Uh, as you know, these pre presentations and the whole session will be available to all afterwards. And uh, I would like to once again thank all of you uh, who uh, took part in this first session of today's meeting uh, for your inputs, for your dedication. I wish you a lot of success uh, at your universities to uh, develop these programs and I think you will be an inspiration to many and so hoping that we have kept well to the time I think we have reached uh, the end of our session and that there will now be a small break uh, I'm not sure if there's any other service announcement but thank you very much I enjoyed the session very much and I hope that you did also see you in 10 minutes <laughs>